Hey guys, so we're here at uh, the North Fort Myers homestead and we're taking a tour of this very, very beautiful farm uh, with lots of fruit trees and lots of vegetables that they offer to the public for sale. And um, it's such a great day out here today in North Fort Myers. Weather, weather is beautiful and also I do have the owner with me, his name is Aaron, and he's going to be doing a, a walkthrough tour of what he has to offer. Say hi, Aaron. Hi, how are you? Thank you. So, Aaron, um, how did uh, you get to start the, the farm? And just a briefly. So, yeah, we've been at this for maybe a year and a half now, me and my wife, and um, it's always been a dream of ours for a long time. and. Uh, we finally just in the last year and a half have been able to open up here to the public and um, start selling plants and um, hopefully lots of produce here in the future. So it's just something that we've been always been really passionate about and excited about. Very nice, very nice. So Aaron, we, we did we did meet and we did get to become very good friends and uh, I'm glad to have you as a friend too. And um, uh, you know, you've, you've taught me so many things over the past and uh, I really appreciate that uh, your generosity and and your knowledge of the things that you you grow on the farm. Thank so, you. Uh, if you don't mind, would you take us through a walkthrough? Yeah, let's do a quick tour. All right. So this is the front of the farm, guys. And as we're walking in. Yep. So we're just starting off. So. We really just have this first row kind of planted out and really well established so far. And then the second row is just all mango trees. And then hopefully here in the future, we'll have three, four, five, six rows of um, stuff here in the front. But this is all mangoes. And then here I have a low plot and a June plum, lots of bamboo and bananas. So kinds for of exotic tropicals. So for some of the folks who are not familiar with exotic fruits, uh, we're going to have to explain a little bit. Uh, loquat, um, Aaron, uh, if you can just tell us like the flavoring of a loquat and what does it taste like and stuff like that. Oh, they're, they're very sweet, sort of maybe like a peach or an apricot. I think they're very delicious. And it, it fruits early in the spring, so it's a nice fruit in the early spring when not a lot of other stuff is ripe yet. And over here, I see you have a June plum. Yep. Or the golden apple? Or golden apple, yeah. yes. The Caribbean folks, uh, like me, uh, we, we call it golden apple. Mm -hmm. I, there's I, lots, of, lots of fruit on here. So oh, wow. Look at this, folks. Wow. Yeah. If you guys can only see this. Wow. This is so good. So at this stage, they're more crunchy and sour. And as they get a little bit bigger and more ripe, they'd be more sweet and juicy. And this tree is loaded. If you guys can see this, wow, this is so beautiful, guys. And we've been picking off of this every day, too. So I have a quick question. What's the difference between hog plum and june plum? Okay, that's a good one. So they're both in the same family, but they are different different species of fruit. Um, the june plum is will ripen up yellow, and to me it tastes more like a mango, where the, um, the hog plum would ripen up red, and has a sweet kind of like um, applesauce taste to me. I'm not sure how the, the customers would describe it, but okay. both are very good. I have my daughter here and the family here with me on the homestead today. Uh, Neha, would you mind picking up one of the ripe ones so we can show the folks what it looks like? Yeah, because I've been looking at it for a long time. Uh, yep, that, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Look at that, folks. So this is the ripe one, and this is this is nice and sweet. The and texture. the seed, uh, after you eat the flesh off of it, the seed is is more like prickly uh, seed. It's like a, it looks almost look like a porcupine. <laughs> yeah, they're the thorny seeds. Yeah, thorny seeds. All right, we're gonna move on now. So you have some bananas here. Yeah. These you, are the dwarf nam wa bananas. Dwarf nam bananas. Is that a v Vietnamese? I think it's Thai. Or oh, Thai? Thai. Yep. Okay. Vietnam. Oh, I love Vietnam. And these went through those um, 15 mile an hour winds that we had. Oh, no. And they are leaning some, but they didn't fall over, which I was really impressed. I think this is our most popular banana. Oh, look at this, guys. 
He has nice big bunches over there. Ready and this one always has fruit on it. And now it has two sets of fruit at the same time, which is very really beautiful. Yep. All right, so did, what what type of tree is this? This is a um, egg fruit or canistel. Canistel. Yep. Oh wow. They're very, very delicious. Very nice. Wow. Yep. I, I believe canistel uh, has a more egg custard taste to it. Yep. Yep. Wow. I, I think they make really good smoothies and milkshakes, and um, they could be eaten out of hand too. But I think they're really good in a smoothie. Wow, oh, guys. So kind of a sweet custardy flavor. If you guys in the area, definitely come and check them out over here because uh, when the season for this stuff starts to bear, I'm pretty sure Aaron would let you taste some of this. Lots of bananas. I love the growth on the bananas. Very right. nice. And this is the um, sapodilla. It's sapodilla. 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 I've heard people call them uh, nisparrows or naysberries. Yes, these are the ba like baby sapodillas. They're sticky. A chico sapote. Also chico sapote. Very yeah. yes, yes. Very nice. Very and nice. this is a dwarf tree. It's a Silas Woods. A dwarf tree in sapodilla. Very and it's, nice. Um, ever bearing. Ever bearing too. Wow. Yeah. So it has a lot of good qualities. This I'm... one will fruit so heavy that it can actually snap the limbs. Wow. See I if... might have to buy this from you, Aaron. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a good one. Wow. Yeah. It's always always loaded with fruit. You mentioned dwarf, so I'm I'm interested in getting, getting this for dwarf sure. <laughs> we used to. Um... Wow, this tree is already loaded, guys. If you can see, Aaron is gonna show you. Look at this, guys. Look at this. I think all these trees have only been in the ground for like three years, maybe four years now. Uh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The Malika mango. Malika mango. Yep. mango. And this one would be a dwarf, but this would be another one that you could keep small. And so that was kind of along the road here. I tried to do all smaller trees and um something that's always going to be fruiting and um the malika is a good one it always sets fruits even in the bad years it always has fruit on it wow. this is my most productive mango out of all my mango trees too on the farm wow very, very good to know and then the last fruit tree on this farm is the uh the black sapote this is black sapote? Yep. Black sapote. Oh. So they call this the chocolate pudding the fruit? Chocolate pudding black fruit. Sapote. Yes, I, I've had this fruit down in uh, Homestead, Florida. Uh, they made it actually into uh, a smoothie. They added uh, vanilla ice cream to it and it tasted just like chocolate pudding. So this would be a great one to mix with the um, canister. Really? Yeah, if you did like this and the canister and a smoothie, that would be awesome. Oh my gosh, I, I can't wait to try this, Aaron. You definitely got to invite me back to the farm when. And these are very prolific too. Wow. Yeah. So there's always plenty of fruit. Th does it, how 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 much growth uh, can we expect from the black sapote? So this is going to be a little bit bigger than some of the other trees that I was saying was dwarf. This would be a, maybe a full size tree. Okay. All right. This is kind of messy over here. Okay. Mm, so hey, you guys. So Aaron, Aaron does have a, a pond over here Ooh, that he okay. maintains, and uh, there is uh, fish in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe tilapia is probably catfishes oh. too. So he's a man of multiple talents here, guys. So. Oh, thank you. This is a dwarf Hawaiian. A dwarf Hawaiian mango, guys. And this is the first one to flower for me every year on the farm. Oh, okay. So if we don't have any frost this year, these fruits are going to be very early. Very nice. Check out the flowering, guys. Definitely got hit by a little cold, so it, it sprouted, huh? Mm-hmm. Very nice, very nice. And then the um, the food pantry, uh, uh, it's a mission in Immokalee called Cultivate Abundance. They planted all this cassava in here. And that's all going to go to the um, the mission when it's ready. Wow! So if you guys didn't know, um, 
uh, Aaron does do a lot of charity work as well, uh, and um, he is more than willing to, you know, send some of that information over to you guys if you guys are interested. Um, we're more than willing to put some links on the videos as well. Awesome, awesome. And this one's blooming early too. So this is another mango tree that we have? Yeah. So this is a Graham mango. Graham mango. Yep. And it's, um, I think it might be a Julie seedling. And it's out of um, Trinidad. And um, yep. And I haven't tried this one yet, but I'm excited to try it. Oh, very nice. It kind of looks like a dwarf too. Yeah, it does have that dwarf habit. I don't know if it's as dwarf as the Julie, but it is a um, kind of sprawling tree very nice very nice and then this next one fruiting here this is actually one of my favorites and this is the um lemon meringue it's very delicious mango in my opinion um i've and i haven't tried the others but i, I really do like the lemon meringue out of the ones wait wait so, so so back up we, we're talking lemon meringue pie or lemon meringue mango it's lemon meringue mango wow yep. never heard of that so this actually they came from um southeast asia and it was out of um, Burma, and I believe it's called Poi Pu Clay over there. But then when they were brought into the United States, they called them um, Lemon Meringue as a, maybe a way of rebranding them. But a very popular mango and a very delicious in my opinion. This is a cassava. This is cassava? Yeah, maybe tapioca or manioc. Mm. Yep. Tapioca, what you're using? Mm -hmm. The bubble teas? Bubble tea. Boba. Boba? Maybe, maybe. My favorite this is cassava, type of... you guys. Wow, mm -hmm. very nice. Yep. It's a very productive cassava too. And then a few more mangoes. All of them are really closely planted together. This is pina colada. Pina it's a very colada. delicious mango. Wow, the names are so are so interesting. Mm -hmm. Pina colada mango. And we have a wide variety planted here. I think I just planted one of each variety. And then some more cassava, and then more mangoes. These were all just planted last year. And a lot of them are already blooming in one year too. And this is a M4. So it's just, it's still not unnamed variety, but it's a new variety. And maybe at some point they'll find a name for it that fits, but it's a coconut flavored. Interesting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Coconut flavored mangoes. Very interesting. This is another very popular new variety. And it's the uh, sweet tart. Sweet tart. Yep. Wow. Love the names. Yep. Love the names. Very productive. Very Candy. popular. Everybody that's tried them really loves them. And then the Buddha belly, bamboo. Oh, this is bamboo? It's a, it's a dwarf Buddha belly, or the um, Waman would be the proper name. Dwarf Buddha belly. Yep. So, for you folks out there who doesn't know what the dwarf Buddha belly, let me just show you so you have an idea. On the, you can see the bulges on the bamboo. Yep. So interesting. So interesting. All right. in the garden. I don't, I don't want to. Hey, Aaron, is that chickens? They're roosters. No, they're they roosters. They are roosters. <laughs> Look at that. Free range, guys. Free range. They're and phoenix roosters. They're phoenix. You can see oh. by their feathers. This is, this is the hen here. So these were all born around um, August. And so they would just be August. They're just so Four big. months old now, yeah. They're pretty big for their age. So the reason why they're called Phoenix, can you tell us why they're called Phoenix? Because of their feathers. Yeah, they're pale. They pale. Really color. They're, they're a very beautiful breed. They're, they're if you can see their tails, they have that iridescent uh, feathers. <laughs> very nice. 
And they're not scared of me at all. Nope, never. <laughs> Poking the camera into their heads. <laughs> Can you can you feed the the chickens? Wow. Yeah. She stole them some food. She doesn't know how to feed the chickens. Here, oh, they're gone. Oh, wait. Okay. It's a city girl on the farm. <laughs> Look, he's gonna show you. Oh my he's goodness. Some food. Oh, you just yeah, I'm just talking to them. Oh, now they all want to go in. <laughs> that one looks like an Oreo. Oh, yeah. A McFlurry. That would be. Name it Oreo McFlurry. Oreo McFlurry. Oh, he. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron has introduced me to this guy, so he's called. Uh, what, what is his name again? That's Macho. That's Macho. Yep. Everybody likes Macho's hair. <laughs> macho has. Um, uh, <laughs> Macho has an attitude uh, disorder. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. <laughs> anger, anger issues. <laughs> but Ma Ma Macho is the king of this this uh, this this nest right now. He rules the roost. Mm -hmm. But he's such a beautiful chicken. Mm -hmm. Love his feathers. And he even has a little bit of blues and some different colors in there too. It's just like the white is just like covering it all. His <laughs> anger issues. Now I can see. <laughs> we sell eggs too. And you sell eggs mm -hmm. too? Yep. Very nice. Very we nice. have chickens and ducks. Oh, chicken and ducks. Mm -hmm. Wow, guys. So if you guys are interested in getting some organic farm fresh eggs, uh, you guys know where to come out. This is uh, NOFO, N-O-F-O, Gross, out in North Fort Myers. You can get your fresh eggs, fresh duck eggs. It's so beautiful guys so beautiful and this is their hen house i'm just gonna take you a little show you there where they go to sleep at night they, they go in there they walk in there and they go to sleep at night so they can be safe hey macho how you doing there buddy say hi say hi to everyone in the world <laughs> That was really coming to me. <laughs> bye bye. So and Aaron also runs a very nice nursery, guys. Um, and he does sell all these plants, uh, all <coughs> exotic fruit trees. So you know, if you guys are here in coming over, you you need a fruit tree or two, come check him out. He he very much uh, gonna teach you how to take care of it and and tell you how to to you know um the, the instructions and all that stuff so uh he does do all of this by himself so you know he's very knowledgeable and he can guide you the right way all right let's go okay see i have a wide range of fruit trees um mangoes avocados guavas every type of tropical fruit that you can think of um we're going to carry a lot of vegetables here too soon and um maybe even some uh ornamentals at some point your palms are just trying different things but um for the most part everybody likes to come out for the fruit trees and so we have a lot of different tropical fruits
Well, the reason why we're, we, uh, Aaron doesn't have the veggies, all the vegetables right now, because we're uh, we're in December right now. We just passed Christmas, so uh, you know the, the weather still dips down a little bit into the night. So, mm -hmm. but uh, expect that in spring, uh, oh, yeah. he will definitely carry all the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So we have strawberry trees, garcinias, we have mulberries, soursops, loquats. We have the wax jambu, star fruits, the kaimito, the star apple, uh, jabotacabas, gooseberries, pomegranates, ice cream beans, peanut butter fruit, embays, jackfruit, the Suriname cherries, miracle fruit. Is the Suriname black cherry or red cherry? This is a black one, but they do come red or black. Wow, yep. those, those are the sweet ones. We also have Barbados cherries, miracle fruit, hog plums, avocados. I mean, it's kind of too much to list on the video. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, guys. He ha he does have rows and rows of these uh, fruit trees that I'm gonna show you really quickly. And he does have the more adult versions, the grown. Uh, I'm sorry, the grown trees in the back too. So, uh, depending on what your preferences are. So check it out, check it out. I'm gonna show you all the rows that he's he's planting. A lot of mango trees in a wide variety, maybe 30, 40 different types of mangoes. There's definitely a, a lot of different types of mangoes to carry. So we've also started planting out some rows back here. And um, this first row we planted early on, and these are actually all seedling mangoes, which I normally wouldn't recommend to people to plant, but um, they did fruit for us already. And um, some of the fruit were good, but a lot of them weren't. And then the, um, the second row here, these are all grafted mango trees. And for somebody that doesn't have a lot of space or time to invest into these um, seedlings, this would be the way to go because all of these fruit fruited right away and they all came out very good and they're all you know the known varieties that we like to plant so this first one here is a um, cotton candy and it is a um, late season mango it would be the last mango to bloom and fruit for us maybe until like october and um very delicious no strings um very small seed and a coconut flavor and then the next one there is a um beverly that's also a late season mango and then we have the um, offspring of the uh, lemon meringue, and that would be the lemon zest. And this one would be tied with me for my, my most favorite mango. And this one's starting to bloom here too. And all these trees, these trees were planted a year later from the ones that we looked at out front. And so these would probably be maybe um, three years old now. And they're all nice size, already into production. And then you can see some of these trees I've pruned out in recently. And so you can see some of the pruning I did. Uh, it was kind of done late and heavy, but it, um, I wouldn't recommend that always, but it was you know, what we had to do to try to bring them down to size. Very nice, very yep. nice. Um, so Aaron, tell us, uh, do you, uh, if, if these plants are not for sale, uh, then the fruits. Uh, yeah, so these, when people come out and they want to try some of the fruit from the, um, the trees in the nursery or purchase some, this would be where they would be coming from. So hopefully here in a few years, we'll have a lot of production on these trees and a lot of fruit for sale. I remember you telling me something also uh, about starting up like a fruit stand in the yeah. front. Yeah, that's the overall plan is that um, eventually here we'll have our fruit. That was the original plan too, is I wanted to do a fruit stand, but um, you know, without the time to, to wait for everything to start bearing, we started doing the nursery. 
And so um, the idea is here in the future, people will be able to come in, they can um, check out some plants, check out some fruit, and we'll have a nice produce stand set up. We have a lot of vegetables we're putting in the ground. Hopefully we'll have all these exotic tropical fruits for people to try, um, stuff that you're not gonna find in your grocery store. Um, you know, a lot of the really exotic tastes of the Amazon or the tropics. So some of my favorites, Aaron, is mangoes and sugarcane. Oh yeah, we'll uh, be growing all of that. You, you're going to have sugarcane soon. So I, I noticed you planted some. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the future of sugarcanes on your farm. Oh yeah, so that's another big one. We'd, we'd like to start juicing sugarcane so when people come out and it's a little bit warmer weather and maybe they're getting a little hot, they can have a nice drink, refreshing drink of some sugarcane juice. Um, I don't know if you guys do it with lime or ginger or something like that. It would be really delicious. I mean, I could go for one right now. Mm -hmm. Same here. I, I, I definitely love sugar cane juice. Wow. All right. We're coming over to the vegetable patch now. We're here with Aaron and his wife, Melinda. Say hi, guys. Hi. hi. So uh, Melinda is going to give us a little bit of a tour of her vegetable gardening. And what she has to offer. Yeah, so uh, this is the vegetable garden. Uh, this season we have three rows of tomatoes uh, growing 23 different varieties. So ranging from the little cherry tomatoes to the plum tomatoes, the yellow pear tomato, and then also like your larger slicer tomatoes that you could use on sandwiches. Um, so yeah, 23 different varieties, like right here we have some tomatoes growing and that one's called Sweet Million. So this technique that I'm using, you'll see that Aaron and I put these T-posts in and we have string. It's called the Florida Weave Method. So it's really good for like the vining tomatoes. So like right here I would need to put another row of string so the tomatoes just keep growing up and up. Yeah, so a lot of abundance of tomatoes here pretty soon. And then over here, we have eggplant growing. So this is called fairy tale eggplant. It's a dwarf variety, so it's a smaller type of eggplant. I've never grown eggplant before, so this is my first time growing it, but I'm super excited. I've heard really good things about this type of eggplant. And then here we have three different types of peppers. So this is a bull nose pepper. We have sweet uh, pepper. And then this one, I'm super excited uh, to grow. It's my first time growing it. It's called Bopino pepper. Um, I forget. I want to say it's Puerto Rican, but Brazil. I, is it Brazil? I think it's Brazilian. Okay. Um, but I've heard really good things about this pepper, and it's just doing really healthy here. So I'm super excited about that. And then uh, here we have a really, this one's sun sugar growing. I like the color of all of the different varieties of tomatoes. So we have Sweet Million, Green Zebra, Sun Sugar, Sun Gold, Black from Tula, uh, Black Crim. So we have a mix of varieties. And then in the far rows over here, we're going to plant, the plan is to plant either cucumber or some lettuce greens, like kale. We have two varieties of kale that we can plant in here. Um, and then over here in this row, this is all onions. And Aaron knows more um, about the onions. Yeah, so we did a walking onion. And then the onions on the end, which they, they haven't come up yet, those are a variety from uh, an organization called Heart, which is a non-for-profit in Central Florida. And that's an heirloom onion too from Florida. It's, uh, I think it's called Fenley onion. And we're about to go feed some ducks. Look at this. Oh, 
so fluffy. <laughs> They're so they, don't even, they don't even know what the starfruit is. Yeah, look, they didn't go for the They're thing. stomping oh. on it. <laughs> is there one more duck? Uh, they keep shaking. Sure, it wasn't a false alarm. <laughs> <laughs> They're so pretty. They're, They're so really cute. Soft too. Wait, have you touched them before? same thing and then uh, his little brother pet him they're not gonna eat the, the i don't think know so. they stomped on it yeah i don't think they're gonna go for it oh wait oh, no. oh now they're eating it no oh. Oh, no 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 yes the one i was petting this one was eating it <laughs> mm. i cut all that up for you guys yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have sliced it all up like that. <laughs> yeah, they're just stomping on it. And you like put it on our good plate. I know, I'm really like... <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> they just, it's, they don't even know what it is. Yeah. Either that or they wanted it fresher or She's something. She's just going around. <laughs> they're trying to get all the crumbs that they yeah. dropped. <laughs> they really like the corn. So there's a canal over there. I'm sorry, there's a there's a pond back there that the ducks hang out in. And there's a tilapia and catfish and stuff back there. I usually I'll feed them up there and that's why they went up there like This is where they hang out at night. So they can be safe. So so this is the back back part of the farm. Look at this. This is my feet. And that's how close they are. It could be dangerous because we don't know how much. Can they eat out of my hand? Put some food in your hand. I need more food in my hand though. Take some of the grains into, into your hand. I should have put the starfruit in that. Yeah. Thing, and they would have went for it. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe put it in the in the plate. Maybe. Yeah. Put it in the plate. Uh, it's just because of the other ducks that was their favorite food. So I figured this is they would like. Because uh, it's soft. Yeah. Juicy. Oh my God! They're coming for me. <laughs> Shit, we'll see it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, maybe. I'm over there. My hand. Oh, no! <laughs> 
<laughs> They're eating out of my hand! Yeah. Oh my god! They eat so quick though. <laughs> Oh, you stepping on my hand, dude? Dude is stepping on my hand.